Hey everyone, how's it going? Today we're going to be going through Champion Select and Solo Queue. We're going to be going through all the information you should be taking in based on what the enemy team picks or even your own team. But most importantly, we're going to be figuring out how to get the most out of your champion pool, how to know which champion to pick in the right situation so that you have the highest chance of winning that game from Champ Select. Hey everyone, if you're passionate about improving and leveling up your gameplay, I've been offering coaching classes for 5 days a week for quite some time and just seen firsthand how much my students have been improving across all different elo brackets. How it works is you'll come to a class with a VOD you'd like reviewed and I'm going to help you with your early game, your mid game or anything you feel like needs improving. And if you're unsure then I'm going to steer you in the right direction by setting clear learning objectives. Link's going to be in the description, I hope to see you there, but if not then enjoy the video. So before we dive into all the information you should be taking in in Champ Select, I want to give you some advice, and that is as a top laner, you should be trying to get counterpick in solo queue every single game. The way the game is right now, top lane counterpick matters the most by far out of all 5 roles. If I had to order it, I would say it goes top, then mid, then support, then jungle, then AD, where support and mid are pretty similar at high ranks, but no matter, regardless of that, top lane counterpick matters the most and there is a big gap between that and the rest of the roles. And the reason for that, the way that the game is right now, of course top lane is very isolated, counterpick matters a lot regardless of what season but right now a lot of the strong blind pick champions are being nerfed they've been nerfing Cassante quite often Jax, Fiora if you look at my blind pick tier list and look at the S tier champs a lot of them are being nerfed you know Fiora, Gragas, Jax, Renekton even Olaf with the new items is weaker you know you don't get haste on Stridebreaker if you build Hydra you're very squishy so a lot of these weaker these champions are weaker now than they were before so there's just less strong blind picks to choose from. And also, the way that the game is played right now, a lot of junglers are exploding the game around grubs for no reason. Not for no reason, of course they want the grubs, but grubs are heavily contested objective because dragon takes a, a similar time to kill, I would say, but grubs gives a lot of XP and gold to the jungle, so that feels a lot better for him to take. And a lot of junglers are just naturally drawn to it. So having a strong matchup means you can get pro to play for grubs, you'll be in a better spot, taking better trades, so it's a lot easier for you to win the game topside in that type of situation if you have a good matchup. So those are the two most important reasons by far. Of course there are some others. Top lane in general just has some really strong champs that can 1v9 the game in the right situation. If you're playing a champion like Darius or Gwen into a bunch of tanky meatballs that run into you, melee champs, you know champs like Volibear and Sedge that run at you, your champ's going to feel really broken. But if you play into a bunch of strong range champs that are just kiting you out, of course it's going to be the opposite. So counterpick's quite important and the way you should be trying to get it in champ select, I recommend not just instantly popping into the game, and trying to swap with your teammate. Luckily they've made it, you can swap positions in champ select, best change they've ever made, but you should be trying to wait for the enemy to show some champions and try to swap with your teammate. So if they show support, swap with your support. If they show jungle, so you get the drill, try to swap with a teammate where they've already shown their role. And that's not always gonna be possible. If you're first picking on blue, or they haven't shown champs that haven't been already picked in your, your team's position, then you just gotta try to swap because it's really important you try to pick as late as possible and champ select as top lane. Now for blue side, we're going to be going through blue side a lot more later on and how to blind pick, but one thing I want to say is it's ideal to pick 4-5 with your mid laner if you can. So for example, if you just pick 2-3, oh on blue side I'm going to have to blind anyway and you just pick your top laner, the enemy top can counter you 3-4 and then their mid laner can counter pick your mid laner. So both of you are going to be countered and your top side is going to be very weak. So the way to avoid that, if you pick at the same time as your mid laner on 4-5 blue, then that's going to be avoided. Now as for the information you should be taking in in champ select, the most important by far is of course going to be your top lane matchup. You should almost always be trying to pick a champion that you can play well, that does well into the enemy team's top laner. Now there are some exceptions and we will cover that later on, but what I strongly recommend you do is have a sticky note on your desktop, you know a google doc, whatever it may be, of all the top lane champs you run into, you know 30, 40, 50, doesn't matter how many, and all your counter picks prepared for every situation. You should place these counter picks in order, of preference in that matchup. So for example, let's say you're up against a Camille. Now the counters that you might have in your pool, you might play Jax, you might play Fiora, you might play Renekton, but you feel more confident in the Renekton versus Camille matchup, even though you feel like you're better at Jax, than have Renekton as your first. So order it in preference of how confident you are in that matchup. And if possible, try to get as many champions possible that you can play into that matchup as you can. Of course, put them in order of preference, but the reason you want to have more than just two or three, even though the gap between your third most comfortable and fourth might be big, is because there might be a perfect situation for those other picks. So for example, talking about Camille, you can play Malphite into Camille and do just fine. You can get your items for free, and there might be some games you run into where they have Camille top, maybe, you know, Kindred Jungle, Akshama, just a perfect Malphite game, and you'll want to play it then. You probably wouldn't want to play Renekton in that game. It would still do great, don't get me wrong, and you could still play it but Malphite is just going to completely end the game there so of course you can play that if you're comfortable in that matchup. 
And while you're making your list, if you feel like there's some champions you're running into while you're making it, that you feel like I don't really have a good counter pick to them. There's no champion from my pool where I feel like, nice, this is a great matchup. Don't worry too much about it. Just pick the champion and write them down, the champions where you feel the most comfortable playing into it. So to give an example, Let's say you don't have a good counter to Olaf. Maybe you don't play champions like Fiora or Akali very well. That's fine. You don't have to force it. Play a champion you're uncomfortable with. Let's say you can play Renekton. Even though that is a slightly Olaf favored matchup, you can get really good at the Renekton side. So if you feel like there's a matchup where you don't feel really confident in, I recommend you study that matchup like crazy. You should watch VODs of Olaf versus Renekton. Get really good at it. And every single time you verse Olaf, Pick the champion you've prepared into it if you can and try to really, really break down that matchup and get really good at it. And then by the end of the list, you should have a pretty good list of champions you feel really confident in and some where you feel like you need to study. So put your time into it, get really good at those matchups, it'll build the champion mastery as well. And then no matter what champion you run into in solo queue, whatever pick you have, you're going to feel good regardless. Something else you need to watch out for in champion select is the top jungle interaction. The way your champion interacts with not just the enemy top laner, but the enemy jungler as well. There can be plenty of situations where countering the enemy jungler is actually more beneficial than top, depending on the matchup. So to give some examples, let's say for example, you're last picking on red and they pick Aatrox. Pretty good blind, and with Aatrox they pick a jungler like Graves or Kindred. Now even though Jax into Aatrox is a skill matchup, it's not necessarily a hard counter compared to if you pick the champion like Fiora. Fiora doesn't do as well into Graves and Kindred, they can easily kite her, dodge her parry, and just shoot her down from range, but Jax can of course block all of their auto attacks. So if you pick Jax into that situation up against Aatrox and they have Graves or Kindred, then it's going to be really hard for you to die to a gang. You can just queue away from them to a ward, you can block all their damage with E, and if you ever get a lead in that game, you're just going to be able to 1v2 them inside the whole game. They're going to have to send 3 or 4 people to deal with you, and that's really when you're going to start to 1v9 that type of game. So keeping in mind, there can be situations where the matchup is fine, but countering the enemy jungle is just much more important. So to give some more examples, let's say they pick Renekton Elise. You might want to be countering the Renekton with a champion like Jace or a champion like Nar, but very, very likely if they're playing Renekton Elise or Renekton Rek'Sai or something, they're probably going to be ganking you. And if you play in a mobile squishy range champ, even though if you're playing a custom game, the matchup is great into Renekton, you're probably just going to get E flash W'd and die. To a gank, you might get Tower Dive from full HP from Renekton at least. So in that type of situation, you might want to pick a champ like Cassante or a champion like Orn, where it's really hard to dive them and you're so tanky you can absorb a lot of their pressure. And even if you die, you're still going to be very useful in the game. So I'll give one more example. Let's say the enemy jungler is playing a champion like Hecarim or Evelyn and your top matchup. Let's say, again, let's just say Aatrox, right? Really common champion, one of the most picked champs in the game right now. And you pick Darius or Riven into this game. Even though the Darius and Riven and Aatrox matchup isn't necessarily a stomp for them, if you verse a champion like Hecarim or Eve, they need to full clear. Those champions just need to full clear on repeat until they're level 6, and then make a play in most situations. Of course they'll gank if it's a free kill, but if you play a champion like Darius or Riven, you can attack them on their blue buff level 1, you can probably 1v2 at that point, ignite Riven or Darius with Ghost Flash, or even if you 2 wave crash or 3 wave crash, invade them on their camp if they don't start it, and just look for an early game plan built around shutting down the enemy jungler, because you picked mainly for that, not really for your lane, but the matchup is still fine as well. You shouldn't, of course, counter the enemy jungle if the top matchup sucks. If they're playing Gragas Graves, for example, probably don't want to be picking Jax into it. So it's important that your matchup is not terrible, but you're countering the jungle and playing a matchup that's either good top, or just fine, or a skill matchup in general, or even just slightly losing. Now you might be thinking to yourself, how am I supposed to know which champions I play counter jungle? I haven't really thought about that before, countering the jungle with my champ pool. And don't worry, I'm not expecting you to know the best situation to pick your champ into every single jungle champ in the game. It's just something I want you to be aware about and think more about. You can be scrolling through the list of junglers on OPGG, you know, compare it to your champion pool and really start to think more about it. Every time I play Jace, for example, and I'm playing up against a champ like Grixai or a champ like Jarvan, it feels way harder compared to when I verse champs like Lilia or champs like Talia or Nidalee, the game just feels way easier depending on the jungle champ when I'm playing Jace. And you might have plenty of examples of this, maybe when you're playing a champ like Darius and you verse, like we talked about, Hecarim, or another meatball like a Sejuani or something like that, the game feels quite good. But when you're versing range champs that are cutting you like a Kindred or even a Talia, the game can feel quite annoying. So really start to think more about it and just grow your understanding of the champions you play in your pool, when they feel good, when they feel bad, and mainly look to build upon that champ select. It's even something you can practice. You can do the reps every single champ select. Think about, all right, this is their top, this is their jungle. What champion that I have in my pool feels good into both of these champs? And then just try to build upon it. Then you can review it back after. Okay, that didn't feel as good as I thought, or that felt quite good. And you can adjust your decision-making for next time.
Now, although the way your champion interacts with the enemy top jungle is going to be the most important in most situations, there's still going to be games when you can pick a team comp counter. So you've seen the entire enemy comp or most of their champions, and you pick a champion that doesn't necessarily do that well 1v1, or even top jungle doesn't matter that much, but it's really good into their team comp. Now this is going to be best used in situations where you don't really know your matchup. Maybe they have multiple flex pick champions or you're blinding on blue, but you can pick a champion that does very well into their comp, or a champion where your matchup is fine, like with top jungle before, but you also do well into the entire team comp. So to give some examples, let's say for example, you're versus Aatrox top. I'm going to keep using common, let's change Aatrox then. Let's say you're up against Darius top, the most played champion on the patch right now. And they have champions like Cog, Lulu and Bot or Azir in mid. So they have a really strong front to back team comp. If you pick a champion that has to run in, so let's say you play a champion like Olaf, even though Olaf versus Darius is a bit of a skill matchup, you're just going to get completely shit on by the Azir and the Koglulu. You're not going to be able to use your champion very well, even though you might be very good at Olaf. So in that type of situation, you could pick Jace, where Jace does very well into Enchanters. So champs like Koglulu, Lucianami, Lucianami not as good, but Koglulu, you know, Jan or Aphelios, stuff like that. And then a mobile control mages, so champs like Quay, champs like Azir, Jace is really good. You can obviously poke them down from far away, you don't have to go near them, and you can be useful in the team fight without giving them range to hit you. So they would be classified as a team comp counter. Even if the matchup is not that good, as long as the matchup is not horrible, you're still going to be very useful in the game. So another example would be if you verse a bunch of mobile AD carriers. So this is the most common one, a team comp counter, would be Malphite. Malphite is a game-breaking champion in my opinion because there are certain team comps, the enemy team's team comps, where Malphite just completely 1v9s the game. So let's say for example you verse you know, an Akshan mid, Graves jungle, you know, an Aphelios AD carry. Malphite is just going to end the game, even if your matchup is terrible. Even if you're up against a champion like Gragas or Renekton, you're going to lose lane. It actually doesn't matter, because the rest of the team can't really function into your champion. They can't play into you. So Malphite in that situation would be way better than countering the Renekton or the Gragas top with a lane counter. So, so give you some more examples. So heavy crowd control, low damage. So, you know, Sejuani jungle or a Mumu, you know, champs like that. Maybe they have Annie mid or Ari or something like that. Not that much damage, but they have a lot of CC. Champs like Olaf can do really well. If they have Ash AD carry, you know, Nautilus support. Olaf is going to do exceptionally well, even if you might not be in the best top lane matchup. So there are dozens of examples I could give, you know, like we talked about before, heavy melee comp that runs into champs like Gwen, champs like Darius, so it's really important that you break down your champion pool and you think about not just your matchups, but the best situations where your champion feels like it plays at its best. So for example, you've probably played games of, let's say, Camille, and you're trying to run into Zyra Khan or Poppy, champs like that, your champ feels really, really hard to play, but when it's the opposite, when you best champs maybe like Jin, you know, Jin Yumi or something like that, and their jungle is just playing champ like Graves, your champ probably feels quite good. So really start to think about the times where your champ feels really useful in the game, and when they don't, not just for your 1v1 matchup, in terms of the team comp as a whole, and you'll start to see patterns of when your champion feels best. I know if you are an Olaf player and you verse champs like Cassiopeia or champs like Vayne, you would probably don't feel as good as compared to games where they have a lower damage mid or a lower damage AD carry that's harder for them to cut you. So really start to break down your champion pool and figure out the best situations what feels bad to play against, what feels good, and after every game you play, you can review just that and build on your knowledge. So those are the main points to keep in mind when you're picking against the enemy team's champions, but there is still some information you can use based on what your team is picking. Now, there are some things I would advise against. So for example, you can play a champion in top that does well against the enemy top jungle, but I wouldn't really pick a champion in top that synergizes perfectly with your jungle and tunnel vision on that. Now, it's great if you play a champion that wins your lane and also does well with your jungle. Don't get me wrong, that's going to be good. But don't purely pick your champion based on what synergizes with them. So for example, Let's say your jungler has picked Nidalee, and you're like, alright, Nidalee, I'll pick Renekton. Renekton, Nidalee, great combo, I can stun him for his spear, really easy ganks. But then your Nidalee, he purely just plays bot side, he just fully plays bot side, doesn't come top at all, and you blind pick Renekton when maybe it's not your most comfortable champ, maybe you're in a bad matchup, and he's not really making use of this combo. But if, let's say, for example, they've already blinded Camille, and then you pick Renekton, it's going to be good regardless, so even if Nidalee doesn't give you any resources like she should, you're still going to be fine in that matchup, you're still going to be useful in the game. So don't tunnel too much on what your team is picking, the most important things you do need to watch out for, the first one is of course going to be the damage mix. You should almost never pick a champion that makes your team comp full AD or full AP, unless it is just so impactful or your champion pool is so small, so limited you don't have an option, which is why I always recommend to have an AP champion in your champion pool if you're a top laner, because there are a lot of situations where maybe your mid wants to play in a Zed, maybe your jungle wants to play Kane or Graves or Zinzel, and you don't want to be playing 
an AD champion in that team comp. Your full comp's going to be AD, of course, they can stack armor, and even worse if you're full AP and they stack MR. So really try to pick a champion that changes the damage mix. So it's important to have out not just the champions you can play, but if your, cha your champion pool is mainly AD champions, you should even have a little section for AP, just so you know, all right, I have to play AP this game no matter what. I'll play these champions or even the reverse. Now, even though I don't recommend picking a champion just to synergize with your jungler, unless it's a good matchup for you also, there are still some games where you can pick a champion that'll set up your entire team composition as a whole. You'll be setting up your team for success. And the difference in this is, let's say you pick around your jungler, he might have a bad game. He might play bot, he might be tilted, he might just be bad at his champion. It's definitely not going to be worth it. But if you pick a champion that sets up your entire team for success and synergizes around then, and even if they play badly in tilt, you're probably going to lose that game anyway if your entire team did poorly. So picking a champion that will set up your entire team comp for success can be good. I wouldn't do it every game, but there are going to be some opportunities for you to do that. So to give some examples of those, let's say, for example, your mid is playing a hyper carry control mage. So champs like Azir, champs like Ori, champs like Huey, and your AD carry is also playing one, you know, in a Felios or a Jinx, long range AD carry, who's a mobile, uh, a mobile. If they get peeled, they're going to do quite well. In that situation, you don't really need much more damage on your team. You don't really have to play like a Fiora or a Riven in that team comp. You can actually play a champion like Orn or Cassante. And if you do well in the game, even if you win your lane or go even, you can just peel for those hyper carry control mage and ADC champs and make it really easy for them to play. But you don't always just have to pick, oh, I'll pick a tank because I've got these guys. You can just also pick bruises that are good in front of backing. So if you have Azir Jinx and you play like a Darius or an Aatrox, the Azir Jinx is going to shoot them from far away. They have to run at them. And then Darius and Aatrox can, of course, chop them up. Even though in a lot of situations, Aatrox wants to build lethality and try to flank. If you have a team comp like that, where you have insane damage threats from your team, if you keep them alive, then of course you can do the bruiser build and play more of a front-to-back style. Now, it's important to note, like we talked about before, that you don't do this every game. You shouldn't pop into every solo queue game trying to set up your team for success. That is the wrong mentality. And I will prioritize all of this information at the end from order of priority, what you should be thinking about. You know, like we talked about the top jungle interaction, the top matchup are going to be up there. They're going to be one of the most important, and this will be quite low. But it is a situation, there are going to be situations you run into where you can pick for your team comp, and it's going to give you the highest chance of winning. So, like we talked about, the Azir Jinx Lulu comp, right? If you pick a frontline and create space for them, or a bruiser, the chance of winning is going to be higher than if, let's say, for example, you picked a champion like Quinn or a champion like Akshan or Teemo. Even if you win your lane on those champions, if you don't literally explode the game and stomp it, your team comp is going to be so much worse than the enemy team comp, most likely, because you ruined it. You don't have any, you know, frontline, you don't have any tankiness, so your mid and your AD and your support champ aren't going to get as much value compared to if you just pick one champion that would allow them to do so. So that's probably the most standard example, picking a bit of beef, a bit of frontline for your hyper carries, but there are some more. If you're playing with a heavy roam style mid laner, so if they're playing TF, playing champs like Galio, and they're trying to impact the map, it's more important to play a champion that can make the lane quite volatile. So champs like Camille, champs like Jax, Renekton, where you can play quite aggressive and tr heavy trade, compared to, let's say, you're playing Udea vs Rek'Sai, or Udea vs Volibear, right? Very stale, very meatball-y. You don't really want to be doing that. If your mid laner is a champion that wants to be exploding the game early from his roams, you want to be playing a champion that can make a volatile, and if he chooses to put resources into you, you're going to use that gold a lot better than if you're just playing a meatball and playing to scale, or just going even against your lane opponent. Moving on to blind picking. Now, in my recent challenger climb in season 14, the biggest obstacle I ran into by far was blinding. How do I pick my champion on blue or on red when my teammates are swapping and carry this game? And I realized my approach was all wrong. I was going into the game trying to 1v9, trying to carry and trying to win, where it's just reality. You're not going to be able to carry and you're not going to be able to win every game you play. So the approach you need to have, especially with, when blind picking, is how do I have as much impact as possible in this game? Your top priority should be being extremely useful. Not Your top priority should not be carrying carrying the game, 1v9ing or anything like that, it should be being as useful and impactful as possible. Now, I realized my approach was wrong, so I was playing champions that aren't that good blind, so champs like Olaf in the season aren't as good at being blinded, champs like, you know, Jax are still good, they're still good but not as good as before, so my approach was definitely wrong. Where in last season, with the Grasp Sundra Jax, you could pretty much win every matchup in the game, but I was going into every lane with the new build, with Triforce, with Lethal Tempo, and trying to win my matchup that way, or even the Conqueror Ravenous Hydra build that TF Play is doing, trying that out. But of course, your laning power, especially early game in a bad matchup, is a lot weaker. So when I was blinding, or when I was playing bad matchups, I would take the Grasp, or I'd take Fleet, depending on the matchup, and play more defensive. Maybe I would even went Darn Shield in certain situations, and play more so to be useful in the game, as opposed to stomp my lane, get 5 kills, and carry the game. Right? That's an approach that's not going to be possible every game, so it's better to prioritize being extremely useful.
Now, as for which champion specifically to be blinding, I do have some advice on that, and I will be remaking my blind pick tier list later on. But for now, the advice I have to give is trying to blind pick champions that are going to be useful in the game, based on what you've seen so far. So even if you have to blind pick your top matchup, you should still be picking as late as possible and seeing some of their champions. Maybe you see mid jungle, maybe you see support, you know, picking into their jungle like we talked about before, or just picking champions that are useful into their comp. So, for example, let's say for they have a Yasuo mid or a Yone and they have Samira AD carry champs like that. Renekton, even if you're playing a terrible matchup, even if you're versus a champ like Quinn, you're still going to be very useful in that game because it's really hard for champs like Yasuo or champs like Samira to play into you. Of course, the point click stun is so hard for them to execute what they want to be doing in the team fight. And so another example, you know, champs like Jax, and if they've picked a Graves or an Akshan mid, you know, Kindred Jungle, champs like that, it's really useful to pick champions that do well into the rest of their team comp, because the way I see it, if you're going to be blinding, in theory, you should be in a bad matchup anyway. That might not always be the case. Sometimes you blind and then your top lane is a nice guy and he picks a shit champion that's into yours and you're able to win the lane anyway. But most of the time, if you blind pick your champ, it should not be in your favor. But if you pick a champion that does well into the rest of their team comp, that's going to give you the highest chance of winning or the highest chance of being impactful. Now, in terms of what champions to avoid when blind picking, it's important not to blind champions with game breaking or really difficult matchups. So, for example, if they've shown you know, Akshan mid, and in a fairly nice carry, you might be thinking, nice, Malphite looks pretty good this game, I might go Malphite. But Malphite versus Silas is a game-breaking matchup in my opinion, because Silas wins that matchup so hard, and Silas with Malphite ulti is so hard for your team to play into. It makes it really, really difficult, and if Silas ever gets a kill or it snowballs in that game, it's going to be basically unplayable. And another example is if you're playing Jace and you versus Malphite. Maybe you have, J you have a Kindred jungle, or any AD jungle really, maybe you have a Zinzel, or a volley, something like that, and you pick Jace, and they're playing Malphite into Jace, it's going to be really easy for them to kill you on repeat. The enemy top jungle, Malphite, and you're going to, Malphite top, and you know, Vi or Evelyn, doesn't matter the jungle, but he's going to be able to farm you for kills, because it's so hard to survive in that matchup, unless you're exceptionally good at Jace, and your jungler is quite good as well. You should also try to avoid blinding champions that are really weak early game, especially if they have a strong early jungler. So let's say, for example, you're blinding on blue, and they've got a champion like Volibear or Rek'Sai, you know, Zen Zhao, Lee Sin. Strong early game champions like this, and you're trying to blind pick Gangplank or a champion like Kale, you're probably going to get blown open top. Because if you blind pick, let's say, Kale, and they've got Jax top, Volley, Jungle, something like that, you're probably going to get dived, or you're going to get killed on the bounce back. It's going to be really hard for you to get to your items unscathed. Or even if you're playing a champion like Garen, really strong later on, quite weak 1-5, to five, and you're blinding, maybe you're going to verse Darius and Volibear, you know, Darius Elise, really hard for you to play into that type of combination of champions because your champion is not that good in the 1v1 matchup but also the enemy team's jungle is really hard for you to play against especially if you're in a bad matchup so prioritize a champion that is very useful in the game and ideally a champion that has some early game power now on top of all this the most important thing by far for blinding your champion is of course going to be your champion mastery and comfort on this champion you should almost never blind a champion purely because it is a good blind you need to have a good understanding of how to be useful in the game and how to use your champion to its maximum capacity. If you go into a game and you've almost never played Jax and you just watch this guy and you see, oh, they've got Graves Jungle, I'll blind Jax, you're probably going to play a really hard matchup. Maybe if there's a Kennen or a Quinn, Greg or something like that, and you're going to really struggle in the lane because th those matchups take a lot of time to get good at. And especially if you have a low mastery on the champion, your autopilot or the way you play out your early lane is going to struggle into a hard matchup. So it's better to prioritize champions that you're really comfortable in on over champions that are objectively better blind picks than them. Moving on to dodging. Now in the past dodging was way easier than it is now because you had nameplates on. You could just see, okay, my support main is playing first time Lee Sin, or my AD carry main is playing first time Yasuo top, probably going to be dodging this one. But now that there's no nameplates, you have to be a bit more careful with it. You have to see the information given to you in champ select that is not quite so obvious. Now the fact is you should keep in mind when dodging. First of all, the thing about dodging is you can dodge once every 24 hours and you just get the small penalty. The 5 LP 6 minute wait, that is a dodge that is very useful to use. The second dodge I'd advise against, unless you know you've got Disco Nunu, something like that, the minus 10 half an hour wait, not really worth it, but one dodge a day doesn't really hurt. It's quite helpful actually, especially in games where you feel like you're not going to be that impactful. Now keep in mind also if you dodge an ARAM or a normal game, and you also shouldn't be dodging ARAMs, come on boys, but if you dodge one of those, your next dodge, even if it's your first dodge of the day, on summoners on ranked summoners rift is actually going to count to the second dodge the 10 lp 30 minute wait so be careful on that but generally if you're a ranked player then just you can look to dodge once every 24 hours and you're going to be fine 
Now as for when to dodge specifically, there are three main factors I want you to keep in mind before deciding to dodge or not. The first is going to be, are you in a position to carry or be very impactful in this early game? So to give an example, let's say you've blinded Camille, you love playing Camille, and you realize they've counterpicked with Ignite, Pantheon, and a Volibear Jungle, or a Rek'Sai. If you go 0-0 in this game, you have played far beyond what's expected to you. That is just so impressive if you can go 0-0, zero, zero, if it's Ignite, Pantheon, and an early pressure jungle, especially if you have maybe a Graves or a Kane, something like that, not really going to be helping you that much. So in this type of game, you going 0-0 zero, zero for the first 14-15 minutes of the game is your impact in this game, which means you're inherently relying on the rest of your team to get a lead or to not get smashed in the early stages of the game before you get to that point where you can roam around the map and be a lot more useful because playing aggressive in your early game, trying to heavy trade onto the Pantheon, I'm not saying it's impossible, and I'm not saying every single time you versus aggressive top aggressive jungle, you should play, you know, complete 0-0 zero, zero style. I'm just saying if you're versus a volley that's clearing up in a Pantheon that knows what he's doing and you go 0-0, zero, zero, that is extremely useful for your game. That is your, the highest impact you can that could be expected of you and that type of game state which means you're relying on your team to carry so that's a factor you need to keep in mind because it means you can't be impactful in this early game maybe the game explodes around you know the void grubs nothing you can do about it maybe the game just ends through bot and you don't have a lead on top side because you're playing more defensive so it's important in that type of game that that be a factor for your dodging because it means your impact in this early game is going to be so low there might even be a situation where it's just a 15 20 minute ff before you've even had a chance to impact with that being said, I personally, and I strongly recommend, you almost never dodge in situations where you're in a really good matchup. If you're in a great matchup, you've got counterpick, your champ does well into their comp, you should almost never dodge that game. Of course, if you have two or three disco ghost cleanse people, you know, running around being toxic in chat, of course you can dodge, but most of the time, if you're in a position where you can he heavily impact the game in the early stage of the game, then you don't need to dodge, because that means that game is going to be in your control. If you explode the game topside, even if your bot lane goes 0-10, you have a chance to be impactful in that game game but like i said before if you're in a situation where it's really unlikely that you can explode the game topside the pantheon volley example then you're inherently relying on your team so that is a good factor to keep in mind when dodging so you also have to keep in mind the reverse you want to dodge when you have a low chance of having impact in the early game but if you're in a situation where you can just hard stomp the enemy top maybe you can even 1v2 top jungle you pick jackson to kimmel graves or something like that you should almost never dodge in that type of game the second factor you should keep in mind and this is a big one for me personally is if you have a bunch of champions on your team that are not useful unless they are played exceptionally well and get fed. So to give some examples, if you have a Kane, Kane is a champion who is terrible early game, does almost nothing, and provides nothing to a team comp. No CC, very little damage unless he's fed, not tanky at all. So that is what I'd call a useless champ. He doesn't do anything for a team comp, but if he gets really fed, of course he can carry the game. He'll run through walls like an assassin, really OP when he's ahead, but that champion doesn't do anything if it doesn't get ahead. So I'm not saying that's out of your control. Of course, if you play with a champ like that, you should be trying to set him up for success, you know, trying to freeze when he's puffing up towards you, get your lane opponent low, try to snowball him. But generally, if you have a bunch of champions like that on your team, the game is very difficult. Because all of those champions want to play inherently selfishly. But if you have a bunch of champs that play selfish on your team and they're not useful without a bunch of resources, you can see where the problem will lie. So some examples for other roles, mid could be a champ like Kiana or a champ like Zed. They need to be getting ahead or they're just not going to be as useful as other champs in the game. And for AD carry, it's generally champs like Samira or champs like Nyla or Callista, where they need to be snowballing in their lane to be more useful than the enemy champs. And support, this is the biggest example. There's two opposite ends of the spectrum for support. You have a Pike and you have a Janna, where Janna, in my opinion, one of the most useful champs in the game. Even if she plays well or plays poorly, her champ is always useful. Insane disengage shielding and scaling, where Pike has to play very well. He has to be impacting the map, roaming, basically carrying the game in the early game, because if he is not fed, his champ does literally nothing. He runs around the team fight, and you've probably played with the 1 in 14 Pike player, just looking for a kill steal with his ulti you know, stealing your shutdown, stuff like that, there's just not a champion that you want to be playing with. So if you just have Pike and a bunch of other useful champs, of course you can play, but if you load into a game, your matchup's not that good, I mean, you pop into a game, sorry, matchup's not great, you have Kane Jungle, Pike, you know, Pike Samira bot, something like that, the game's going to be pretty out of your control. Now, if the enemy team has a bunch of useless champs like that too, it's fine, but if your team comp just looks really messy and a lot of selfish, you know, one-shotty full damage champs, then a lot of the times dodging that type of game can be quite good for you. But of course this concept goes both ways. If you have a bunch of champions that are useful on your team no matter what happens in the game, then of course it's going to give you less of a reason to dodge, even if you're in a bad matchup. So let's say for example, you're playing Camille versus Fiora or Camille versus, you know, Renekton, something like that, but the rest of your team are playing very useful champs. Maybe you have a 
uh, Zin Zhao Jungle and Ori Mid, you know, a bunch of useful champs, Zyra Khan, AD carry support, you definitely don't need to be dodging that game. The champs on your team work well together, they are so powerful, even, they're pretty decent early, they're really good late game, so you don't really need to be dodging even if you're individually in a bad spot, But if the, especially if the enemy team has a bunch of useless champs as well. So let's say you have that exact team comp we just talked about, if they have Fiora top, you're in a bad matchup, but they have Kane Jungle, you know, Samira AD carry, a bunch of selfish, useless champs that, ne that need resources to do very well, then that'll be an indicator for you to play out that game. And the third factor is the most obvious one, general toxicity. If your teammates are already flaming each other and attacking each other in champion select, a very low stress environment, they're not going to be able to survive how stressful summoner's rift is. If they're a jungler that they was already flaming, and champ select gets invaded, or maybe your bot gets ganked and dies, they're probably going to explode in the game because they can't even handle champ select. So I'm not saying you need to dodge every single time, your team is flaming or typing in champs like especially if you're in a good matchup you could probably look to play it out but these all three of these factors we talked about you can't really have one without the other you don't only dodge if you're in a bad state you don't only dodge if teams being toxic you need to keep all of these factors in mind so if you're in a game that looks like you know people are typing your matchup's not that good of course they sort of combine each with each other and you could look to dodge that type of game bunch of useless champs maybe everyone's been quite nice but you see yasuo kane mid jungle something like that probably a good game to dodge unless you're in a position where you can carry and i will reiterate it i almost never dodge on red side r5 because i'm confident i can pick a champion and just completely explode the game early and win like that because the best way to cheer up your team if they're losing or if they're tilted is winning the game so if you're in a position where you can exploit the game early and show them that you're a clear win condition the chance of you winning the game is going to be a lot higher even if they're playing champions that aren't that good or they're typing anything like that that is my top priority for champ select but of course i keep all three of these factors in mind now we covered quite a lot of information in this video, so before we wrap it up, I'm going to be going through some examples from recent solo queue games of mine on my challenger climb, and talking you through my thought process and how I decided on what champion to play in these games. So it's important before we begin, I show you my champion pool that I gave myself before I started my climb. Now keep in mind it wasn't the same the entire way through, I did swap out a champion or two as I went on, you know, lowered my priority on certain champions, but this is the champion pool I settled on for my climb, and most of the champions I picked were from this list. So we're going to be going through three examples each, three examples of games where I had counterpick and three examples of games where I had to blind. So starting with counterpick, the most easy, and for this example here, I decided to go Malphite. Now, of course, my factors for this, they had a full AD team comp. The matchup wasn't super difficult. I would say it's in Yorick's favor, but Malphite was really impactful in this game. They had a Jace mid, Caitlyn AD carry. So even if they had an AP jungle, I probably still would have played him because he's so useful in this type of game. Regardless of, even if I go 0-5, my champion is going to be useful. Now, I actually opted to go AP in this game. I do rate the AP build quite highly. And the reason for that is we didn't really need a tank in this game. As you can see from our team comp, MF, Rumble, Malphite, Rex, I really heavy dive really heavy burst we need to be blowing up targets and one-shotting them we don't really play for sustained damage so the ap build felt better for me in this moment but maybe i'm biased maybe i just like ap malphite but of course in this game regardless of my build even if i build ad my champion would have been very useful for our next example, we have a game where I picked Darius. Now, my factors for this, of course, look at their top jungle. They have Rek'Sai and Mordekaiser. Now, I did assume it was more top, but it doesn't really matter, because Darius can completely 1v2 those champs. They are mobile melee champions that run towards you. Well, Rek'Sai are not that immobile, but you know what I mean. They are melee champs that rely on running towards you to be useful. So, of course, Darius is going to be great in this game, and they even have a low-range ADC. Now, another factor is I have a Karthus jungle. Now, I did talk about not picking, really, to set up your jungle for success, but with Karthus, ideally he wants to be solo AP, so of course me playing a champion like Darius in this game is going to be more beneficial because Gwen is also great in this game for me, but Gwen and Darius I see as pretty similar. They work in really similar situations, where of course Gwen is stronger late late game, Darius stronger early, but here in this game they're both good, but of course I picked Darius over Gwen because the physical damage was more important in this game. And for our next example, I chose to pick Jax. Now, of course, this looks like a great Jax game because they have Trin to mid top and since our jungle, even though at the highest level, the Jax Trin matchup is not super Jax favored, Jax plays really well into heavy auto attack based champions. So from this point, I hadn't seen Leona, uh, seen Syndra, sorry, she was their last pick. So Jax is good into, pretty good into Varus, pretty good into Leona because you can block her Q with your E, but exceptionally good into Zin Zhao and Trin bait. So like we said, picking into the top jungle is going to be more important than picking around the entire enemy comp. So into Zin Zhao and Trindamir, my champ's always going to be very useful. I'm going to get a ton of value from my E. I can look to build Frozen Heart in this game. It's going to be really hard for them to be useful. And another factor, I have an AP jungle. He's playing Elise. So of course, I'm going to be playing an AD champion to set him up. I'm going to be playing champs like Renekton, Camille Fiora, and even Jax. And out of all of these champions I just listed, Jax was the most useful based on what they had picked on the enemy top jungle. 
Moving on to the blind picking examples, and before I begin the three good examples, I did want to show one where I blind pick quite poorly. So I'll talk you through my thought process. In this game here, I chose to pick Jace, even though I hadn't seen the enemy top laner. Now the reason I picked it is they had Zaya and they had Milio. Running into those two champs as a top lane AD Bruiser, anything like that, really, really difficult. So in this game, I chose to blind pick Jace, even though Malphite was open. And I literally said out loud after I picked it, my roommate walked past. I was saying, please don't pick Malphite, this game's going to be so hard. And I already used my dodge for the day. Pretty sure someone was trolling champ select, and of course he locks in Malphite and they just gank top on repeat permanently. Really hard for me to survive that. So even though Jace is quite useful in this game, into Kindred, into Zaya, into Milio, really hard for me to survive enemy top jungle. So it's lucky my team did well in this game, because in any other game, probably the enemy jungle can just 1v9 it. The reason I wanted to showcase that example is because we do cover picking a champion that's going into the enemy team comp, but you can see it's not really the top priority. Even though my champion is useful into their champs, I could have picked a champ that's useful into them regardless and not put myself in a really vulnerable position. So for example, I could have looked to play, let's just say for example, a champ like Gragas in this game. Gragas is still very useful into their enchanter and mobile AD carry backline, can knock Kindred and knock his teammates out of the ulti. Still going to be useful in this game, but it's a much better blind pick than Jace, especially when Malphite was open. Moving on to the examples where I blind pick quite well. Now in this game, for whatever reason, my mid lane did not want to swap with me and he wanted to last pick. Now granted Aurelia could have been a flex, we'd only seen Aurelia, Jarvan and Israel from that point. He definitely could have picked Ari already in the early stages, but you know, it's all cute, it's up to him. So I chose to blind pick Jax, because even though Aurelia can be a flex and I might have to play a hard top matchup like a Kennen or a Gragas, something like that, my champ's going to be useful in this game regardless. I'm good into Israel, I'm good into Jarvan, good into Aurelia. So regardless of how bad my top lane matchup is, is going to be, I would still be confident that it'll be very useful in this game as a blind pick. So another example here, I'd seen most of their champions, but I did not know my top lane matchup. Now, I was pretty confident that it was Camille's support, so I mainly picked around it being as useful as possible. Because their mid jungle was a Mumu Talia, really reliant on CC. The Talia flick, the Mumu ulti Q, of course, those champions are mainly picked for their utility and crowd control. So, in this game, I chose to blind pick Olaf, really useful in this game, regardless of what happens. Now, granted, we didn't win, but you can't win every single game you play, and I was confident heading into this game that my champion was going to be very useful because most of their champions rely on CC to get down their damage, and of course, with Ghost Flash and my ulti, really hard for their champions to function into me even if I was in a bad matchup. And our final example, I did pick Jax again. Now you saw Jax come up a lot, he was my main blind pick on my climb, really comfortable on the champion and I still think he's a great blind regardless of the nerfs. And in this game, the reason I chose to blind Jax is because I saw Aurelia, Senna and Shaco. So a lot of auto attack based champions, of course Shaco can go AP, but I see AP Shaco as pretty much a useless champ. So mainly picking around their heavy auto attacking mid and AD carry, really hard for them to play into my champion, so I chose to play Jax. Now of course the matchup did end up being poor, I had diverse Gragas, but even though my lane was hard, my champion was still useful in this game. Now I'm going to wrap it up with an example of a game where I didn't pick for my matchup or even the top jungle whatsoever. I picked purely for my team comp. So in this game you can see, I have AD mid jungle and I have Jinx Lulu bot. So in this game I need to play an AP champion, but I don't really need to play an AP champion that does damage. We have assassin mid, we have strong early jungle and hyperscaling bot lane. We need to be playing a champion that has frontline and can create space for my team, and also provides magic damage. So I chose to blind pick Malphite in this game, pretty sure Silas was banned, and they ended up playing Nar into it. Now this guy is a Nar one trick, that's why he picked it, not a great matchup for him, but regardless, even if I had to play a terrible matchup, my champion was going to be useful. I'm really good into ADTF, which is all anyone's playing right now, really good into Misfortune, and more importantly, I'm going to be creating space and being a frontline for my hyper carry scaling enchanter you know jinx lulu bot and i already have enough damage on my team from the full damage champs in jungle and mid so i'm not really going to be missing out on that department it's better for me to play a champion that provides cc and magic damage and malphite was the one i wanted to play the most out of my champion pool Alright everyone, I'm going to wrap it up there and I hope this video helped expand your knowledge and understanding of Champion Select, because in my opinion it is just such an important and underrated part of the game, especially if you have your champion pool planned out. If you know what you want to be playing, it can be really vital to know the best situation to pick each of your champions in any given game. So hopefully this video gave you the knowledge needed to do just that, or at the very least improve upon it. So I wish you the best of luck in your games and I'll see you guys next time.